Okay, everybody, we are looking at Gold Beach on 6 June 1944. We're going to be recreating part of the British landings of 50th Northumberland Division in the jig sector of Gold Beach in June 1944. I'm here with Bruce Lee and Damon from the community. Uh, they're going to be taking the role of the British, and I'm going to be playing the Germans. I'm going to try to defend Festung Europa, so to speak, from uh, the, dastardly, uh, the dastardly British. We're always trying to, you know, reclaim what we've rightfully stolen from the French. I don't know why this is a problem, but apparently it's a problem. So we're going to sort it out one way or the other here today. Um, this is part of our ongoing 75th uh, anniversary commemorative uh, on a more serious note of our 75th um, anniversary commemorative um, get wargaming for um, the Operation Overlord landings on 6 June 1944, obviously. So here is our map. Uh, our finalized map. The Germans are deployed already in place. Oh, I should say the system is Avalon Hill's Panzer Leader, albeit a modified version. And we have the uh, Germans deployed pretty much where they're going to be, uh, at least their starting positions for the game. Uh, the Germans are not terribly mobile, as we'll find out. So the German turns are actually going to be pretty short. Uh, the British turns, not so much. The British have their work cut out for them. So historically, Jig Sector was first assaulted by elements of 1st Hampshire and 1st uh, Dor Dorsetshire, hopefully I'm saying that right, um, uh, are, are the 1st Battalions of those regiments, and they land in those designated sectors uh, we have here along the north. Okay, and we have all kinds of Panzer Leader rules for amphibious landings. Um, Andrew, we're pretty much using the rules right out of the book, uh, with, a very few, um, with a very few exceptions for uh, amphibious landings. That's Panzer Leader Rule Section 11. Is that this? So we're using the same combat results table as the original. Uh, with a couple exceptions, I think the three-to-one column is a little bit more deadly, and I think the one-to-one -one column is a slightly more deadly. I just try to get them a little bit more even. The one that comes right out of the book has these very drastic, like you know, uh, increases in lethality and decreases in lethality. Um, I try to smooth that out a little, but by and large, yes, th this is the combat results table we're using. Actually, I think it's more related to the one in Panzer Blitz from 1970. Uh, we will be using uh, the Panzer Leader right out of the book anti-aircraft fire tables. We have our new weapons effectiveness chart that Damon and I have been working on for Arab Israeli Wars. Arab Israeli War movement rates have all been baked in to the uh, units. We are playing with 150 meter hexes. So you will see that I have gone through and I have updated the movement rates on all infantry units to a, a movement rate of two. So my objective here was to get the game where it will, oh damn it, I sure enough I missed one. Construction engineers are supposed to have a movement rate of two. God damn it. Um, <laughs> they're just really slow today. No, the move, movement rate of one, mate, because they're carrying all the beer. There you go. <laughs> um, everybody else has got a movement rate of two, uh, but in all seriousness, um, the uh, artillery fire powers have been cooked down to the Arab Israeli war system. So you'll see like a German 10.5 centimeter gun has an attack factor of only 13, not 40. Everything basically got divided by three. British 25 pounders got reduced to a 12, a 36, uh, and so on or technically 12 from a 35 but um but then the, the trade-off is that of course uh unlike in panzer leader but like they do in the Israeli wars an artillery mission affects every unit in the hex equally and separately um but i am already getting ahead of myself so at high level the british are coming up oh, come on so there we go. Uh, the British are coming on uh, in the uh, historical um, landing beaches. That's Jig Green and Jig Red. Um, the way I'm looking at this is, again, you guys can can you know play however you want. I'm obviously playing the Germans, and the British are divided into two assault beaches. That's Jig Green and Jig Red. So uh, one of you guys can play First Hampshire, and one of you guys can play First Dorsetshire. It doesn't matter to me which is which. They're both exactly the same. They're both only two line companies. I'm not 100% sure why, but historical records that I've been able to find only have A and B companies of both of these uh, both of these line regiments coming in, or these line battalions coming in, um, 
with the first wave. So we got obviously one company here, three platoons plus the headquarters and machine gun section. Another company, that's that's B Company, and then the support, the support company slash headquarters section. So these initial units have because these are the first units you guys are going to be using. Uh, combat engine, one platoon of combat engineers, one platoon of construction engineers, the 76 millimeter, but are the three inch uh, battalion mortars, a uh, battery of six pounder guns, believe it or not, and um, the headquarters section. And the Bren carriers, I believe, are carrying the six pounders, or I should say, towing the six pounders. These guys are coming in right out of the Higgins boat, so they don't come in with any transport. They're jumping right out of the surf. Okay, and then the Dorsetter is the exact same thing over again. The German forces initially, the Germans don't get any reinforcements, but the German forces are pretty heavily dug in, obviously. Uh, it's the Atlantic Wall. Um, this, oh, I've zoomed out way too much. This map is pretty much uh, set up to be, come on, man. This map is pretty much set up to be reasonably historically accurate, again, to 150 meters per hex in scale. Um, these are the cliffs, um, Andrew, that eventually, if you go f like maybe 10 more hexes further to the west, will eventually lead to that uh, monument that you were talking about. So, Aranch, hopefully I'm saying that right. Aramanch, I'm probably not even saying that right. Um, yeah, the town Aramanch, yeah. Where we're, okay, cool. That's about 10 to 15, maybe 20 hexes further west off this map. As far as my research can indicate, no one actually landed there. Um, they landed here and then turned west inland and attacked across this river valley, got up on this high ground and then spent the rest of the, the second half of D-Day pushing west and attacking all of those positions uh, from the flank and the rear. So it was definitely a huge amount of combat there on D-Day, but I don't know if anyone actually jumped out of the water there, at least on D-Day, or at least not on like the first half of D-Day. Uh, the Germans here are in two basic forces, as indicated by this uh, this white dividing line. Um, it's actually pretty significant to remember it because these guys are morale B, and they're made up of regular German units, like three. Uh, where, where's the platoon? I can use as an example here. Three, two, eight, two uh, platoons. You know your standard German late war. Um, infantry platoons. They're bigger than British platoons. That's why they have a higher uh, defense factor. And they all have MG42s baked into their squads. That's why they have a three attack factor. Whereas the British have a two and a six. That is not the case east of this line where we have the 441st Aust Battalion of 716th Static Infantry. These guys are all made up of Panzer Leader security platoons. And they have a morale of D. These guys suck big time. Um, even German uh, officers after the war in under British interrogation were like, I can't believe we had to try and fight the war with, with, uh, with some of these guys. Um, so this is definitely the squishier side of the board as far as the, as far as the Germans go. Um, they do still have fortifications. They have blocks, they have minefields, the whole nine yards. Um, and most of the objective hexes are here. So what we're probably gonna see is British landing here, British landing here, and then making a big door, kind of a pivot movement down here to the southwest, because here are where most of the objective hexes are. Uh, again, uh, reflecting the historical uh, uh, objectives of the uh, of the of these units. There are seven total objective hexes on the board, are indicated by these usual yellow uh, target uh, icons I use. Uh, you have to take at least um, three of them by, I'm sorry, at least four of them, the majority, four out of seven, by the end of turn 10. Um, fortunately, you have lots of help. So first of all, we have eight Typhoon counters here loaded with uh, high explosive bombs. So there's some serious British air support coming in. Um, I made sure to uh, pick an even number of Typhoon counters because I knew I had two British players and I didn't want anyone fighting over the Typhoons. So, you know, everybody play nice with your toys or you're not going to get any toys next time. Um, I, already, I, I can already tell you that Damon's not impressed because Damon's used to his, uh, his 24 Skyhawks and uh, F4 Phantoms. So he's like eight Typhoons. What the hell am I supposed to do with eight Typhoons? Um, right. As long as I've got more spikes, I don't mind. 
There you go. Yes, we're, we are coming to that. We are coming to that. Trust me. I did not forget about that. And neither does Panzer Leader. Um, so this is what's coming on in the first wave. This is what's coming on in turn one. Turn two. British Force B. Here is where uh, my man Andrew starts to get happy. Hey. Yes. There you go. There we go. Thomas. 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 There we go. Now we are. Um, this is actually what was historically there. Uh, they landed ahead of the, the landings, as everyone has read, you know, were basically chaos. Um, Sherwood Rangers, two squadrons of Sherwood Rangers, were supposed to land at H hour minus five. They were supposed to land at 7:20 a.m. British landings were about half an hour to 45 minutes after the American landings um, because of tide. Uh, optimum tide conditions actually rolled out further to the east, so they actually went in a little bit later. These uh, these Sherwood Rangers down here were supposed to land five minutes early. They wound up landing about uh, 45 minutes, half an hour late. So those are your DD tanks, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, these guys were supposed to land somewhat after the main invasion. They landed practically with the main invasion. So these guys landed early. With the possible accession of that AVRE, that AVRE, that every I don't, that platoon of AVREs, I don't think arrived until later, but I, I can't have a D-Day mission without an AVRE in it. We used them in Juno, we've used them in Sword, and we're going to use them in Gold, goddammit, um, because they're awesome. Um, <laughs> they got that on. Yeah, man, they're they're awesome, man. Uh, they do have a range of one, which kind of stinks. Um, this 20 attack factor might seem pretty low, but everything has been carefully kind of screened and modified to click with the new, with no questions, no special rules, no, oh, well, this is how we played in my basement, you know, house rules kind of, you know, bullshit, to click with the new weapons effectiveness chart. And the weapons effectiveness chart says that each class attack factor Whenever it's fired from less than four hexes, automatically doubles. Well, this poor thing only has a range of one. So it's always firing at less than four hexes. So pretty much that 20, read that as a 40. That thing, which is its original value in Panzer Leader, uh, is what's the point of that whole point of that whole discussion. Obviously, Flails and the Churchill Bobbin and the Churchill Bridge Layer have special abilities, and we'll get into those in just a second. Those come on on turn two. They come on like right behind them and you're almost going to be sorry for that because you're going to have overstacking problems. This is where your beach masters come into play. You really have to get these guys off the beach because the next wave's right behind it. And if you start to overstack and you drift into the wrong hex, you're going to start to have to eliminate your own units as um, units get overstacked in the beach landing hexes. Um, this unit uh, is shared. Pretty much those first two battalions I was looking at before, those two battalions land as they're supposed to be, okay? After that, everything is shared between the two players. So however you guys want to split up, this unit arrives on turn two. These units arrived on both of those beaches, Jig Green and Jig Red. Uh, on turn four, we have, um, so two turns after that, we have uh, British Force C. All British come out on, uh, on the morale beam. Uh, oh, actually, that's not true. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll get back to that. This is the this, this is the second line battalion. This is second Devonshire. This is exactly like the first two battalions that went in, except this one comes on on turn four, and it is split between the two sectors. So, I'm whoever wants to play them, however you guys want to handle that, it's totally up to you guys. Um, as you know, brigade commanders, so to speak. Force D. These are your DD Shermans. These guys land a little differently than other units. They do have a, a slim possibility of sinking. They're not like the Americans at Omaha, which are probably going to sink because reasons, and, and we'll get into that later. Uh, these guys land, uh, if they land, because they can sink. And once they land, they can actually move a little bit. And um, I don't know, they, they, they just have a slightly different landing model because obviously they're not jumping out of boats. They're, they're coming in under their own power. And finally, on turn eight, we have the uh, the British Force E. This is 47th Royal Marine Commando. These guys probably came in a little later in the day. My records show like one in the afternoon, two in the afternoon, which is after what turn 10 would be. But um, 
I, I can't run a game without some kind of commandos, without some kind of marines in it, uh, if I can possibly help it. So, if there's any way to possibly squeeze in marines into any kind of Panzer Leader game, I will take that opportunity. It also includes Centaurs. These are the Royal Marine Commando uh, special versions of the Cromwell with the 95mm assault howitzer, as opposed to the, um, the what's we're calling, as opposed to the, uh, the six pounder. Some units say that two batteries of Royal Artillery, Royal Field Artillery, and Sextons were there. I don't know if they were or not. So if if the if the game's not going well, and the British really need or like real, like I didn't design the scenario right, and the British are really getting the shit shot out of them, I may throw in some Sextons. Uh, that is, um, I can't remember the exact names of the battalions right now, but there's one battery from two different Royal Field Artillery battalions that, according to some records, were in Sextons. Um, but I can't find any photographs of it. So I, pretty much anything I put in one of these games has to be in at least two sources. And so far, I've only found them in one source. So pretty much I'll chuck them in if needed as a, um, as a game balance uh, measure. Okay, everybody, we are uh, back. And what we are looking at here is uh, Andrew, who is playing uh, 1st Hampshire Regiment, or 1st Battalion of the Hampshire, I should say. Um, has set up his forces in his sea hexes where he wants his units to potentially land. And uh, Damon has done the same thing with uh, first horses. Okay, so we're about ready to finally start. We're now beginning turn one. And the first thing that's going to happen is British battleship gunfire, and mostly, believe it or not, destroyers, um, although their guns were much smaller, they were much closer and more accurate. Also, a lot of the battleship fire was ranging way far inland. Uh, trying to knock out German uh, German batteries much further inland. But long story short, we've got some pretty serious um, firepower here coming in um, from the uh, coming in from the sea. So uh, I'm going to ask my two battalion commanders here where they want. Uh, this is the Captain HMS Warspite is asking where you want that first 15 inch shell. Jim, can you just help? Zoom in on uh, Whiskey November 36 Alpha, please. Alright. Peter Steinester 36A, occupied by elements of Ost Battalion 441, 716th Coastal Division. There is a 81mm mortar crew in there, a uh, eh, crappy security platoon, and a 5cm battery of anti tank guns. Flanked by two improved positions, again with substandard infantry. They do have one pretty serious MG42 team in there. Or MG42 section. They're ready to empty out some Higgins boats, saving Private Ryan style. So, uh, Damon, I think we uh, we soften that up mm. for you. Yeah. Make life nice and easy. Um, yeah. It's either it's either that or we split fire. Um, because it's eight, you could split fire and put um, three to one. The twenty-five points you can put through. Mike, what's the uh, cost of the improved position? Brings your Pro dice roll up one by one. Up by two. In by this two. case, up by up by three because uh, he's also in woods. Also, that one is still uh, massed. You can't hit him because he's in trees. This one yeah, is I'm, in the open. Yeah, I'm talking the uh, the target that's actually the... Um, oh, that, that's uh, a fortification. Yeah. That adds 10 to the total defense, and you have to add 2 to the roll. However, he is in the open. He is not in tree cover. Right. And then we move the dice up twice, don't we? Yeah. So on 3 to 1... You're probably not going to kill anything. You might kill one of them, but what you're going to do is you're going to pin them down. Uh, well, that means that, yeah, yeah, and then what, you're, you're probably going to pin them down, and then what's going to happen is because they're uh, morale level D, these are troops from Belarus and Ukraine. They don't really want to be here. They're not going to poke their heads back up because they just got shelled by a freaking battleship. <laughs> 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 so yeah, those those, those, those blockhouses are no joke. There's only like three or four of them on the table, and they're not like within line of sight of each other. But uh, they are no joke. They are little mini castles. They are not going to go gently into that good night. Yeah, but they, they certainly uh, make life a little bit easier for you in terms of landing and not getting shot at. 
Yeah, that's that's always a good one. Yeah, because the only other one I thought of, if you just uh, scroll to oh. the west, please, Jim. Certainly. So the, there, there, where the bluff is, yeah. So the only other one I was thinking of is either dropping it on the two improved positions there to try and soften those up ready for us coming in. Uh, a, yeah. a, battery, a battleship strike on those might not soften them up, but might just wipe them out because those are only improved positions. So there's two kinds of things. There's IPs and there's forts. IPs only give you plus two. They don't add 10 to your defense. It's basically a slit trench and some sandbags. It's what an IP is. Um, well, those, those are my two choices, Damon. Either we soften up the objective for you, get the heads down where they could possibly never come back up again, or we uh, split fire and we take out the two improved positions either side of the bluff. So I'd probably put, I'd probably would put it at your objective, even though you're going to throw an awful lot at uh -huh. it. He's got supporting units around him, so the less you've got firing at you, the easier it's going to be to yeah. take him out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So uh, we've reached a uh, consensus. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Tell your commanders agree. All right. So what? All gunfire on hex four twenty on hex four twenty seven. Yup. All right. Let's all take that blockhouse. On hex 427, uh, no scattering check because it's visible to the guys on the on the ship. That is a B, that is a C visible hex. No one has to call that in. The guy who's calling that in is literally on the ship. So we'll, we'll say it's 55 gun power po uh, fire power points from the C. Um, 55 times three is 165, which actually lines up with if you look it up in uh, the Gold Beach um, Assault it's scenario three in the official uh, Panzer Leader book. It actually comes out a little bit closer to what it's. Uh, to, to what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So we got two four to ones at your convenience, and you know, just tell me which one you're gonna roll first, and then one. Um... Okay. Uh, I'll do the three so, to one first. So three to one on the security platoon. You have to add two to your die roll. Four comes to six. You just dispersed. Okay. Four to one on the mortar team. Mortar team is a two. Becomes a four. He is uh, destroyed because he's on the four to one table. Okay, uh, five centimeter battery of anti tank guns. Or battery of five centimeter anti tank guns. Four to one. A two again. Two becomes a four on the four to one table. He is destroyed. <laughs> Irma Gerd! Fire for effect. Yeah. They had the we effect. already did, sir. Yep. Trust me, the shells are on oh, the way. Oh, you got pretty explosions. Hey. Oh, no, it didn't work. Uh, front. And this is, a, this is a naval gunfire strike, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that explosion a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, shells have gone in. That first Viterstein, that Viterstein Nester is definitely uh, hurting for certain. And uh, we will go ahead and see how the landings go in just a second. Okay, we are now into the landing phase. We are going to move in from just pretty much working our way from left to right. So that puts us with first Hampshire rifles. Okay, Mr. MG Platoon, which hex is my man going to land in? He really only has one choice. We have to land in an adjacent seat, uh, beach hex. He only has one, so he lands here. We're going to see if he drifts this way. That's the next beach hex to the west, or this way. So do me a favor, give me a D6 to see where that MMG section uh, lands. He goes to the west. It's a three. He goes to the west. One, two. Yeah, so he is destroyed. We'll get to him in just a second. Boom. Okay, mortar section. Very first British landing craft hits a boat and hits the block and sinks. Is a six. So that's two oh the God. other way. Also another one. <laughs> oh. This is going well, isn't it? You're, you're off to a great start. <laughs> and you gave away all your battleship support fire to uh, to, da to Damon too. Okay, um, this MG section lands in 416. He hopes. Yeah, they're they're all going to 416. Okay. Goes to the west. Really? Yeah, roll to three. God, dude. 
I think uh, I think maybe uh, another uh, platoon because again, there's only two companies of these uh, guys are presented. I think another company might suddenly show up. Okay, the first rifle platoon. A two, yay! He lands where he's supposed to. Welcome to Normandy. Welcome to France. We have the first British boots on the beach. Successfully. Four. A four, so he goes to 417. All right, he's okay. Next, we have the um, the uh, carrier that's carrying the headquarters unit. He is Oh, he has choice. You want to go for 416 or 417? 417 is where he's meant to go, and he got a three, which means he goes one west, so he goes to 416. Okay, cool. Um, pick up a little bit, please. And last but not least, uh, this rather uh, useless truck. The truck's going to 417. And he goes two to the east. One, two. He winds up over here. Sweet. Oops. So you can see where the, these, these landings get terribly disorganized very, very quickly. Okay. Uh, next, we're going to go with Mr. Comet Engineers. Please don't die. <laughs> uh, he's going to 419, the whole block. Yep. Gets a four, so he goes one to 420. Alright, he's alive. <laughs> yeah, at least. Okay, first rifle platoon. Gets a one, he goes where he was meant to. Awesome. Uh, and uh, fourth, um, the second rifle platoon. Gets a four, so he goes to the same as the engineers. Things are going a little bit better on the west, on the uh, east shoulder of this beach. Next, the truck that is carrying in the uh, six-pounder anti-tank guns. So the truck can actually land on um, 419, can't it? Because I can stack four yes. because they're in vehicles. They're so in vehicles. Yeah, they're in vehicles, so they only count as really one unit for stacking purposes. And he gets where he wanted to go. He got a one. Okay, this infantry platoon is not actually stacked inside that truck. So we have one truck that is carrying the anti-tank guns. That's three units then. Yes, perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what I, was, what I was getting to. One truck in there is carrying somebody, one truck is not. It's kind of a mobile yes. unit. Okay, now we come to uh, this stack. You can choose between 420. You can technically choose to 421 and hope he doesn't, hope that he does drift. <laughs> Where he can go to 322. He's got three choices. Um, I'm going to send the engineers to 322. Great. Okay. <laughs> All right. He gets a two. There he is. His first send rifle the uh, infantry, infantry the same way. All right. Gets a six. Goes twice. So he goes into the block. And he's dead. And yeah, he oh, 322 again. All right. Gets a one. There he is. All right. Your that troops, was painful. such as they are, are landed. Ouch. Yep. Uh, my historical reference, one more time, is the first 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan. Okay. <laughs> um, and Germans haven't even opened fire yet. Yeah, uh, exactly. Plus German four units. <laughs> Your forces here are actually pretty, pretty weak, and I'm, I'm pretty much sure I'm going to throw in that that third company from each battalion in there just to kind of square things up at least a little bit. Okay, so well, think, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say I think I found all the teller mines on the. Uh, there you go. <laughs> on the obstacle. Moving over to so the you're first. Walking around stamping on them. All right. <laughs> yeah. What is this thing? Tink, tink, tink. Oh, like Wiley Coyote. All right, so uh, first Dorset's rifles. We are now looking at the Bren carrier that is carrying six pounder anti tank battery. Mr. Damon, uh, what is your landing hex? You can pick 322 or 323, and then you roll. Um, there's, um, um, we'll try and go for 22 to start with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't roll a yeah. three. <laughs> okay, I'll roll a five instead. Ah, so you're dead the other way. Perfect. Mm. No, five. He, he ends oh, up. No. Oh, no. All yeah. oh, right, sorry. He'd have gone into 323, he'd have wound up on that block. Oh, it's out. only a six, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
I know, so we'll try and put everybody ashore at 325. Okay, combat engineers first. Uh, a six. Shit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Good. Oh, no. That's not good. That was an important unit. What does this okay, big do, lid do if you stamp on it? Right. Uh, next engineer. I'm oh, sorry, uh, next yeah, uh, rifle. Uh, they're going to one. Yay. He rolls a one. He's right where he's supposed to be. Awesome. Yep. Next. Um, the other unit are going into five. Okay, next company. Um, machine gun section can pick either 225, two, or I can pick 225. Can technically pick 226 and hope he drifts. Um, mini, 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 mo. So or do you want to make a last? Do you want to make a last minute change on where on where he is on the sea hex? Because he's, uh, he's actually in a really bad hex right now. This whole this whole stack. Do you want to like mm. do that? Uh, well, actually, the odds. What are the odds of landing where you want? It's it's two out of six, isn't it? Yeah. Or two. Yeah. I go to the two twenty-five, mate. Mind you. Yeah. To, to, you're gonna. You're more likely to drift east by east, one. East. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're only going to drift. How good are you rolling ones 220, and twos? 225 and 226 are basically the same lethality because yeah. either one you have a one to three chance of hitting that block. I, I, there's a bit of me says go for 226 and hope you roll. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Three, four, five, and six. Yeah, I'm thinking the same. Yeah, you just don't do roll one and two. Yeah. Okay. Here come three ones and twos. Oh no. Okay. So, first unit, get six. Get in! <laughs> oh man, he made it! <laughs> Puts him straight in the way of everybody else coming aboard, I'm pretty sure. Uh, second unit is a two. Oh no! Oh shit. And the final unit is a three. Nice. Get in! Well, three over here. One unit to the west. Alright, cool. Uh, next company can pick between 227 or 228. Probably 227. Uh, yeah, yeah, 27. All three into 27. Construction All engineers. And sixes. Engineers. Is it six? Uh, oh, crap. He was going to 228 and he went up over here. Okay, next, rifle platoon and 227. Uh, is it three? That's one hex two. I, 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 he was going in 228 and he wound up over here in 227. Okay, next rifle platoon. <laughs> Five. Um, there's one hex to the east. He winds up here with the MG team. Okay. Um, <laughs> You've been Mr. a bit creative there. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> I don't have to be. I mean, I'm, I'm playing the German. <laughs> Headquarters unit, your one chance or your one choice is really two. Well, I shouldn't say that. You want to go to two twenty nine and hope you don't roll ones and twos. Yeah, why not? Here comes the colonel. The colonel got a two. Oh my god! There goes your battalion commander. Oh, All right, David. You have, no. David, you have to. You're, you're you're literally dead. You have to log off the meeting now. Uh, Bruce, you're now commanding the whole force. Um, no, all right, so three-inch mortar team? Um, yeah, they're going the same. That's a three. B, T28. Uh, <laughs> now I've got... And, uh, that doesn't matter. I'll fix the hex later. Uh, and machine gun team. That's got a 50-50 chance of dying now, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, if he lands in 228, you get to pick. Something in there has to go. T -t -t I'd g I'd go. Uh, what? You're gonna get one, two, or three's wrong. You want you want a four or a five, don't you? Really? Yeah. Well, six. I'm still technically in play. Yeah. Yep. 
Ghost, Ghost, Ghost. We'll, we'll, we'll aim for the, uh, yeah, we'll aim for the, um, we'll aim for where the HQ bleed himself up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a three. Uh, that is one uh, next to the left. So now you got to lose one of those. Something in here's got, got in there. These are your four choices, because now you're overstacked. Hmm. Oh, crap. Which is the least useful of those four. I'm not happy this is happening, but I'm happy as a game designer this happened at least once. This is the kind of stuff that happened on the beaches. How useful are the mortars? Mortars double using direct fire, so they actually, if they're firing directly, they get to attack at six. As long as they can personally see what it is they're hitting. Machine guns only have two, but they can fire up to four hexes at half strength. We'll lose, we'll lose one machine gun because we've got two, so... That's kind of what I was figuring. Okay. Then so at least we've still got some flexibility to... Yeah. ...mush all them together for an attack. Okay, uh, two empty trucks. Um... You might as well save them, the, send them both uh, onto the blocks, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they roll a four and a five. A four oh, there you go. and a five. Just what so... we don't need. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. They roll on the block. One so of they're them on... made it. We're the engineers, they're both of the engineers. Yeah, they both made it. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. Oh, oh you no, mean that's the what you... I was saying. The, the, the unit we oh. don't want has survived. <laughs> Empty trucks are like, what's the problem, man? Why, where's everybody at? Oh my god. And you fixed made it to the truck? This is a lot of dead units. Yeah, this this is almost Omaha level. Omaha level shit right here. Holy crap. So. Give me a second. And I've thrown away all of my engineers. Uh, you've got some. Oh yeah, yeah, well, one unit made it. Well, Operation Pawn Sacrifice, they sacrificed themselves <laughs> in the first go. <laughs> oh, I can't believe all... they drifted onto separate blocks. <laughs> That's almost Suicide Squad, attack! <laughs> I mean, th those, those German beach defenses are supposed to take a bite. I didn't know they were going to take that deep of a bite. That, uh, that, that was pretty the, crazy. I think the thing is there, because they're spaced two apart, the chances of you hitting one is... Yeah, oh, you go I, 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 I set them up uh, deliberately. I just didn't know that there was going to be... Holy crap, look at that. Oh, 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 oh. Holy shit! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, eight, eight platoons of, the, of different kinds. All right, last roll uh, for just you know uh, for the moment, um, Mr. Damon. Uh, give me a d6 and try to roll a one, two, or a three. This is to see how well your battalion holds together after losing its commander. A three. Cool. Your EXO was there. He's got it. Guys, don't worry about it. We never liked him anyway. Um, so now you are now Major Damon, uh, second in command of uh, First Battalion Dorsetshire's, and this is now your battalion. Congratulations on your battlefield promotion, and um, that concludes movement.